Okay, we'll go ahead and call the Tell City uh, Board of Public Works and Safety meeting to order. Um, on the agenda, I do have um, two uh, changes or additions rather under new business. I'm gonna share my screen here so you all can see it. Give me just a second. I have two changes or two additions rather, uh, item D, regional arts photo booth and item E, bottom of the barrel outdoor seating. Uh, I have no other changes. Gerald, is there anything you'd like to add? No, it looks good. Okay, um, I'll entertain a motion uh, to adopt. Motion to adopt agenda. As I have is. a motion made by Gerald and I'll second that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, agenda stands adopted. Uh, next item on the agenda is the presentation of our minutes. Let me pull those up for you. Gerald, these are from our January 4th meeting. Um, if you haven't had a chance uh, to review them yet, uh, I'll give you just no, a moment. I've looked them over. I got them on email. All right. Did you see any changes or corrections? I see none. I'm making a motion to adopt as is. Okay. I have a motion to adopt the uh, minutes from our January 4th meeting by Gerald, and I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda is comments of citizens. I do see that we do have one citizen on here. Um, if there's any comments you have, uh, please do so at this time. Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, next item on the agenda is the department head reports. We'll start off the wastewater department, Mr. Chris Toothman. Chris, I'm pulling up your report now, sir. There you Thanks, go. Mayor, Welcome. board. Um, for the collection system here, uh, not a whole lot going on. We did have our uh, generators uh, filled by CNS, um, so they're ready to go. Um, also, Miller Pipeline is back working and cameraing, uh, videoing some pipes for uh, Ohio Valley Gas, uh, and they've already found some work for us. They're over in the Humboldt and Franklin, uh, between 12th and 13th area. Uh, They've already found an issue where we're going to have to add a add a manhole for for some access that we've never even had, and uh, there's probably a possible lining or some replacing of sewer lines over there that it's uh, probably going to happen. Um, Stormwater, no issues this last couple weeks, uh, and down here at the plant, of course, I think everybody knows that we had a vehicle stolen, the 2012 uh, Chevy. Uh, it has been returned. It is actually uh, at Carmi's Body Shop right now. Uh, we have been in contact with the adjuster and the estimator, uh, which is Carmi. So uh, it had minimal damage. Uh, looks like it just been ridden hard for a little chase. Uh, had uh, mirror damage, door handle, a couple scratches. Uh, but uh, mechanically, we drove it around and uh, it drove fine. So we don't think there's going to be any issues with the motor. And it's all something that I think we, we, we can get taken care of by the body shop. Uh, the last thing here is flood wall. We uh, no issues in the last couple of weeks. So and that's it. All right. Thank you, Chris, for your update. Uh, Gerald, do you have any questions of Chris? Yes, I have a couple. Uh, where they're working today was in that alley there by the firehouse, wasn't it? Yes. Yep. Okay. I've seen that. And I, I'd like to know how they got that truck out down there. <laughs> Do you have an answer for that, Greg? <laughs> you may ask the, uh, I don't know if Derek or Roger's on, Gerald. Um, Roger, Roger is on. Okay. Roger, can you, can you, I mean, I mean, are you allowed to answer that at this time? It means there's still an investigation going on. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, sir, Mayor, I can. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, Gerald. Uh, if, you don't, if you think it's going to investi investigation, don't answer. Uh, no, sir. Uh, it's in the probable cause affidavit, which is public record. Uh, basically, uh, they, well, the suspect picked the lock uh, to the uh, perimeter fence and was able to gain entry that way. I haven't seen the vehicle as far as punching the ignition or anything like that, but uh, he did break and enter the uh, perimeter fence there. Yeah, I was going to say that's secured every night. Yes, it was secured. 
Okay, it's secure. It's got a it's got a lock, and it does have a barbed wire around the fence as well. So yes, the uh, Illinois jurisdiction where they located it has already reached out to the city about uh, restitution, and we've got a bit carmies to determine what that value might be. Connie sent me some documents. Um, once we've got the inf information from Carmi Leisner, then we can notify the officials in Illinois what we may seek for restitution. Good deal. All right, Jared, did you have any other questions? No, I, did, I just wanted to comment that I didn't see them out there working today. I figured that's what they were doing. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Jared, for those questions. They're very, very good questions. I'll move on to uh, Pat Ballmeister, uh, Street Commissioner. Pat, Thank I have you. your port up. So. All right. Thank you, Mayor and Board. Um, last couple of weeks, uh, the trash department's hauled off 74.48 tons of trash last two weeks. Uh, the trash truck that we took over to uh, Ubalars to get it worked on, uh, find out what was wrong with the maybe possibly the transmission uh, on it. And uh, Ubalars uh, contacted me back and said they were not able to work on that truck. Uh, even though it's a Chevrolet, they said that uh, the transmission was in it, I guess, was a, a Ford transmission or the or a transmission that uh, Chevy and Ford both used it and they were not able to work on it. So uh, we had to take the truck over to Ruxers Ford for them to work on it. So they evaluated it and uh, took it for a test drive and, and did uh, say that it is uh, stuck in high range gear and it would not downshift. And uh, they put a, a computer on it and, and analyzed it and found out there was a bunch of bunch of codes on it. So they uh, reset all the codes and found an air leak. And they took it for another drive and they said it drove uh, almost like a new truck. So that's a good news there. So hopefully it won't be too much money. Just the, the time that they uh, had to uh, spend on analyzing it on the computer and stuff. And then hopefully we're going to get that truck back. Uh, this week. So uh, that was kind of good news for me. I was uh, worried about that uh, transmission problem. This could be thousands of dollars. So uh, hopefully uh, we dodged the bullet on that one. Um, uh, that's pretty much all we got on the trash department. Street department, uh, we've been trying to go around on warm days if we can and uh, and not raining or whatever, snowing, uh, patching potholes and working on curb and gutterings. Uh, we went uh, last Friday, uh, myself and some of my men went over to the park recreation to help them pull some, some more poles and uh, take some dugouts down over to the old uh, Little League field and uh, hauled that off. And uh, Friday, uh, Friday evening, I went out and, and did some pre treating on the, the roads, uh, put a little salt down on the hills and the intersections and stuff. And uh, it, we didn't get as much uh, weather as what they said possibly we could get. But then Sunday evening, it started snowing a little bit. So I went back out and uh, did the same thing. And I don't know if it helped or not, but it made me feel a little better. I know that. Uh, other than that, um, that's all I've got going on right now. Okay. Pat, we, I'm going to have Gerald ask him a question in here. But um, I do want to thank you again for you and your um, – street department crew for what they did up by AutoZone that hillside and how nice that looks. Um, I cannot tell you how many residents have called, messaged me and, and just found me out and about and, and, and thanked me for, for getting that done. Uh, you know, I, I can't remember how many bags of litter or trash, whichever you want to call it, you hauled away, but I know it was, uh, was it about six 55 gallon barrel bags? What it was, I mean. Between six and eight, yes, sir. So, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of, of trash and litter that had blown on that hillside just over the years. This was not, that didn't happen just in, in a year. Right. But uh, to get that cleaned up where it's not getting into the creek, where it's not getting out into the streets, um, not to mention that being a dry hillside, like that could have been a potential fire hazard. Right. Um, I just want to thank you again, you and your crew, for yeah. what a great job you're doing. And I, I really appreciate that. Thank you, Mayor. You're I'm welcome. in work hard, though. I'm well, sorry. it looks nice, and we, we're very appreciative. So, uh, Gerald, uh, do you have any questions for Pat? No, but I, I seen him up there working. It looks a whole lot better yeah. than it did. That's something, you know, it doesn't have to be done monthly. It doesn't have to be done every other month. You know, 
it's something that could probably be, be done yearly or so, um, or maybe even as needed. It maybe have to be a couple of times a year, but once it start, once it's kept up, it, it won't be that bad next time. You won't have as much trash, hopefully, next time. Uh, so I, I'm very appreciative. So I just want to thank you again and your crew. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next up, we have Fire Chief uh, Greg Lenny. And I think I've got two of your reports. Do you want to do uh, the summary of the, the, the 2020 run summary or the 2020 run activity? The mayor, the, uh, thank you, mayor. The run activity is actually just a breakdown of the summary. Do you want to start with that one? Yes, the, okay. the, uh, we'll go with the summary. The, the, uh, the run activity, normally I don't go over every one because it's pretty lengthy. Is this, the, this gives, is the link, is this the lengthy one? Yeah, yes, there's uh, 55 calls on there. Basically, you want the basically that gives each date, uh, there you go. run number, the dates, and location and what type of call it was. That's, that's actually the activity page. All the right. summary just gives our, our totals for the year. Uh, like I've been saying for a while, we were, we were actually down quite a bit. Our average is about 80 to 85. So we're down about 30 calls, 30, 35 calls, um, for the year. Um, and it, it's all of them were down. There's no particular one that was less than the other. Uh, so I think it's just all in all with uh, people being home, probably being a little more safe. So uh, we had 55 total. Eight of them were structure fires, four vehicle fires, four brush grass outdoor. Uh, that could have been uh, illegal burning or, you know, that type of thing uh, that would have been outdoor fires. Uh, six were smoke from cooking, uh, burnt or burnt food. That's, that's could have been as simple as somebody's fire alarm going off due to just the excess, uh, smoke from, from cooking. 13 false alarms. That's our automated alarms usually at businesses. Uh, that's down quite a bit, which is actually a relief because we, you know, those a lot of times are probably a quarter of our runs. Uh, 10 electrical, natural gas and propane. That could have been anything from uh, natural gas leaks or gas meters getting hit, uh, propane leaks. We had a couple of those that were uh, a fill station at one of the local businesses. And I think that was uh, more of an error of, of use. And then the electrical, that's, uh, that could have been uh, transformer sparking or, or pole sparks, you know, things like that. The nine smoke calls, those were either smells or what people thought were smoke. Uh, Examples of them were uh, sometimes when it's real uh, moist and hazy, um, weather change, people get a little, you know, like steam from roofs. We've had actually calls of those that is called in of fires. So that's what those are. And then we had one hazmat assist. Um, eight of the calls of total were in Troy Township. That's about average. We usually do between uh, five and 7% out into the township each year. So that's, that's about normal. So uh, any questions of those? No, thank you very much. Gerald, do you, did you get a list of the, the full? Yes, I got it. Got an email okay. and I reviewed it. Okay. okay. If you're not, I would make sure you got uh, any uh, questions for Chief Lenny? I have none. Thank you, Chief, for everything you're doing. Uh, we're greatly appreciated. I'm, I'm glad to see those numbers are down. Uh, I know you definitely are. So uh, it's, it's, it's good to hear that. So thank you again. If, if they stay that way, we're, we're going to knock on wood. That's right. Thank Building you. and zoning. Um, Steve, are you on? Goodson? I don't remember if he's on or not, but I'll go ahead and pull up his report. Uh, I'll find that one here. I didn't see where he'd logged on, but I think he said he couldn't be on tonight even. So give just a second. This is kind of a year end report, uh, Gerald. Um, he, he issued 299, almost 300 permits for 2020. Um, 80 electrical, seven new homes, seven commercial permits, uh, four signs, 169 miscellaneous, uh, 10 demos, 11 sewer inspections and 59 temporary license. Uh, mm -hmm. for a grand total. And then he's collected 13,000 in fees, um, two trash bucks, bust, 39 junk and trash, and year-to-date 156 complaints and 79 letters sent out. Um, 
I do wanna highlight a couple of points. It's very nice to see seven new homes uh, going up in our community. And also the 59 temporary license. That's something that Steve's worked really hard on. Um, other building uh, inspectors have done the same. So, but Steve's really worked to, to get that number up. So this is when an out of town contractor may come here and perform work. He is making sure that they do get a temporary license. And I think that's $25 uh, per license. So uh, I think a couple of those actually are taking the, the actual test to be a licensed contractor in Tell City. So we'll have a couple more on our list after that. Uh, next up, we have Tell City Electric Department. I did see Superintendent Dixon. I don't have his report, but Superintendent Dixon, do you have anything to add to the, uh, add to anything? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, I did not have a written report. And I really didn't have anything until yesterday. Uh, we had a small outage yesterday in 11th and 12th Street area over by CVS, which involved 15 people. Um, our guys had them back on in 14 minutes, so that was a pretty fast response. Um, don't know what the cause was. I haven't got the outage report from operations yet, but uh, they did a good job on getting that back on in 14 minutes. Um, and I did get a message about uh, street lights out around town. Uh, people know that there are street lights out around town. If they could let us know the address of where that street light is at, um, we can respond to that. I don't think there's as many out as reported because they're all LED lights and they don't burn out. So um, if we can get the exact location of where these street lights are out, if the public can tell us, give, call us in and give us an address, um, if they are actually out, we'll get them fixed. Um, if they're out about dusk or dawn, they're, they're not gonna see them. They're, they're gonna be sporadic. I mean, they, somebody driving down the street might think they're out, but they're not because the photo cells all don't come on at the same time. So they may not actually be out. They just might not be turned on yet until it's dark enough. But uh, what, what we need is we just need the actual addresses where they're out so we can respond. Dennis, uh, I can touch base a little bit on that if it's okay. Um, I do know a lot of the decorative street lights. I, I've, I could be off plus or minus two, um, but I counted close to 12 of the decorative street lights out. And I know those are not LED. Um, there's two here in City Hall Park. There's one directly out front of Tell City Electric, one across from German American Bank, one out front of uh, the post office, one out front of Edward, or no, um, is it Edward Jones? No, this is where. There's one out by the depot in the back corner. Of course, we're, we're aware of the one at Humboldt, Main, or in 7th. Um, there, there's several of them out. So, might just in an evening take a drive and start making notes of where they're out. And, you could get those fixed. We would well, appreciate it. Well, if, if people could give us an address to go to, we could get them fixed, but I'm not going to have my guys go out um, driving at night because that involves overtime. So well, what, what we need is addresses so we can go respond to them. Okay. Well, I gave you about five or six of them there. So there you go. Well, can you send me that list? I didn't write them down. So can you send that to me? Yeah, I can. Uh, I'll, I'll type something up and, and get that to you. Okay. That'll work. And I, the next meeting we'll have, uh, I will have an annual, uh, every year we have an annual reliability report from APPA, and I will have that uh, report next meeting. Okay, great. Um, Gerald, do you have any questions uh, for Superintendent Dixon? No, just wondering if those decorative lights might be tied into our Christmas decorations there. Was that the polls you're talking about? Some of them, there was, a, that was the one at Humboldt and 7th, but that's a different story than a typical bulb burned out there. That's, that's okay. a. I didn't know that, if they might've pulled something when they were taking them down or. No, not on that one. That one's. I don't know how they worked. I just know they that worked. one's more of a, an issue underground, I think. Right, Dennis? I don't know which one you're talking about. The, the one by the hideaway on 7th and Humboldt. No, that was uh, the, the intersection one, the taller one. Yeah, that's a different story than just a bulb being out. That's, that deals with underground issues. But the correct? whole fixture needs replaced, and we've got one on order. We're, it took us a while because they, they stopped making those that particular fixture. So we had to round up a fixture that looked similar to the other one. So we're waiting on it. I understand. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dennis.
Move on to the Tell City Police Department. We uh, we have Assistant Chief uh, Roger Smith on. Let me pull up your report here, sir. Just a second. There you are. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there was one item that I left off that I wanted to update the board on, and I didn't have the um, information at the time I sent the information to you. Um, you may have seen on social media or, or heard that uh, we, we are in the middle of uh, starting a hiring process uh, that came with the resignation of Officer Casey James. Uh, she's decided to resign her position uh, in patrol. I just wanted to update the board on that. I have been in discussion in detail with, uh, with the mayor in regards to this. So uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. But uh, I just wanted to give the board an update on that. Gerald, when, I, when's she going to resign or has she resigned? Yes, yes, sir. She has uh, give her letter of resignation. Uh, she wanted to use up some of her uh, time that she had built up to carry her out for the for the two weeks. And uh, Chief agreed to that to keep from paying it out that she could use that time to carry her out for the next couple weeks. So um, we have already once we got the letter in hand, we have already advertised for the uh, uh, position to be filled. Okay. Gerald, just to bring you up on something, and this is, I guess this is probably the best time to kind of bring it up uh, regarding uh, replacing and filling that position. Uh, Assistant Chief and Chief and I, we all had a discussion about the longevity. And uh, Connie has searched and, and is, we're still searching to, to find some things on that. But what we're looking at hoping we can do is if an officer works in another community or city or whatever, transfer their longevity at that job to this job. So if they work there five years, they start here, they would start out with the longevity of five years. Is that is that right, Roger? Yes, sir, Mayor, that, that is exactly right. So that's something we're hoping we can do to entice uh, an officer that may have served five or 10 years somewhere else that is looking for a change to wanna you know move to Tell City uh, to accept that kind of position. Uh, there is a shortage, I guess, on officers, is that fair to say, Roger? I mean, uh, yes, there is. I mean, every department that's trying to do hiring at this time is, is struggling with the same problem. You know, getting qualified uh, applicants and candidates that that may have already had the police academy uh, looking to transfer to another agency. There are several pluses to that. Uh, we wouldn't be without them during the sixteen to eighteen week academy. Um, if they're already enrolled into the PERF program, which the, the cutoff age sometimes gets us on that. So if they're already enrolled, uh, that would be a great thing because we wouldn't have to cut the age off. Uh, you know, we could, we could hire someone over a certain age, whether I, I think it may be 39 now, 40 years old is the cutoff. So Gerald, that may be something um, that maybe we would take under consideration for hiring. Um, and I haven't any... concluded my research on that longevity pay issue yet. Um, thus far, my belief is that we can do it. It may require the council taking a look at an amendment to our uh, uh, ordinance with regard to compensation. Um, but I, but I think if that that would be the worst case scenario is that we'd have to amend the ordinance. Yeah. So that may be something that's coming before the council or the board of works in the near future, Gerald. I just wanted you to be aware of that so you weren't blindsided by it um, if that does come before us. Okay. All right, Roger, sorry, I'll let you proceed with your report, sorry. No, thank you, Mayor, I, I appreciate that. I, I didn't know if you wanted to bring it up at this time or not, I appreciate it. Um, secondly, I think I had, uh, I can't see it, I got my screen drug over, but I think um, we had, we wanted to mention to the board about the decommission of uh, TC8. It's a 1998 Jeep, one of the oldest cars in our fleet. Um, starting to see some increased, uh, repair bills and things on that. Uh, Chief thinks it's time to maybe decommission that thing and let it go at auction or um, however Mr. Hagedorn would recommend that we uh, we sell that thing and advertise it to the public correctly. Um, the other car we had was TC41. It was a 2010 Charger. Uh, we did find a home for that. Uh, Chief Greg Lenny had, uh, had a use for that with the fire department and um, so he he was able to uh, acquire that one from us and, and we, we, uh, we would rather try to help out another agency than just uh, sell it. So uh, that worked out well on that one. But we would just like the board's permission to uh, take apart the Jeep and uh, get all the police stripings and radio equipment out of it and get it ready to sell. 
Is that that's, the one that usually Jim Alexander drives? Yes, yes, sir, Gerald, it is. That, yeah, okay. It's that been around cool. a long time. Yeah, I've been around 20 some years. <laughs> wow, that's might be your, that's, that's amazing. So yeah, we, there is, I think, plans for us to have a, um, an auction. Um, we have a lot of surplus things, equipment, vehicles, uh, so this is what you have there. And I, I don't know, I know we talked about that last year before the whole COVID pandemic hit. Uh, obviously with COVID pandemic, auctions are challenging, I think, I guess is the word, uh, as far as an attendance goes and so forth. So I don't think it's gonna hurt us to go ahead and let you guys, if, if Gerald and the, the board so chooses to approve this, to uh, go ahead and decommission it. Get, that gives you time to take the decals off at your leisure. It's nothing pressing. Um, and then I think early summer, hopefully things are, are a lot better. Uh, we definitely want to make sure when we sell these things, it's it's at an auction where we can have the most attendance, obviously, uh, without causing any uh, effects from COVID. But we want to get the highest and best dollar we can of everything. And so I think to put it in an auction now, might it may not fetch what it could if we waited just another month or two. I'll make a motion to allow that to be decommissioned. And I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion stands approved. And Roger, you also have on your Tell City Police Department uh, UTV? Uh, yes, yes, Mayor. That was the, uh, that was the last item that um, I wanted to bring before the board. We, um, we have been shopping for a side-by-side um, -side UTV for the police department. Uh, for several reasons, um, you know, I'm not going to go through the list of reasons. We've talked to other departments that do have these in their fleet, and um, they said that you know they never imagined that they would use them like they do. Um, we did find one, and um, we have been in contact. We have a this has been a discussion a while. We have an anonymous private donor that wants to pay for this thing. Um, the donor. Uh, has seen the UTV, thinks it's a great idea, and wants to pay 100% of the cost of it. Outstanding. That's 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 phenomenal. Um, whoever the anonymous donor is, at our, uh, thank you for your kind and generous donation. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Is that something sim similar that uh, Perry County EMA has their side by side? Uh, yes, sir, uh, Gerald, it's going to be, uh, we've asked for the full enclosure so we can use it in the uh, cold temperatures. It will have heat. We Just a couple little add-ons, and uh, we hope to uh, equip it with emergency lighting and the uh, police car decals. Uh, uh, hopefully, Greg Lenny will give his input on that so we can mark it up similar to our patrol cars. That'd be great. Well, I think it's great. So, um I'll go ahead and just make a motion to allow the Tell City Police Department to purchase that UTV um, using the donation, the uh, anonymous donation that we had to cover the cost of that. I'll second that, Chris. Um, that a motion is made and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Roger, thank you uh, to you, you and Chief for all you're doing uh, for the Tell City Police Department and the entire Tell City Police Department force and dispatch. Uh, thank you again. Yes, sir. I All do right. have one thing I'd like to comment on. Sure, you can go ahead. Uh, I've seen where one of our residents has passed away, John Holman, along with John and 15 other ones, including me, where he was one of the original police reserve program that started back in 1976. Wow, that's so pretty it, cool. That's, he was one, of, I think he was one of our officers, if I remember. So I just seen that today where he passed. All right. Any other questions? All right, we'll move, we'll move on. Um, we do not have a report from uh, Alvi and he cannot be on. I do not have a report from Sean as he cannot be on as well. So we'll move on to the next item on the agenda and that is wastewater adjustments. Uh, Gerald, uh, myself, uh, along with um, Superintendent uh, Toothman and Councilman Morton have reviewed uh, the request and have found uh, that they all meet the, uh, the requirements. Motion to approve. Okay, and I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, uh, old business, the NDOT sidewalk project. Uh, I do want to update the board uh, on this project. At the uh, previous meeting, and I think even the one before that, um, it was discussed to apply for an NDOT call for projects grant to extend sidewalks from Washington to William Tell Boulevard. Uh, this would be on what I would call the restaurant fast food side and the gas station side and so forth of it. There will be a six foot wide sidewalk extended again from Washington to William Tell Boulevard. Um, in one of the meetings with some of the uh, NDOT representatives, they informed us that it has to connect to another existing sidewalk in order for us to move forward with the application. Well, on the Washington side, that wasn't a problem. Uh, when you reach the William Tell Boulevard side, that was a problem because there are no existing sidewalks on that end. To get around that, um, this project would not let or be started in, or until 2026, really. So uh, we do have about five years to accomplish this task um, if we can move forward with it. The blue line is the proposed construction of a sidewalk all by the city. So if we put a sidewalk in from the other side of the driveway, basically that heads up to a residence up behind uh, the shopping center and extend that to Zurich Way, that will meet the qualifications to allow us to move forward with this grant. Uh, thus allowing residents from the uh, Berglund Hills neighborhood, but not just them, residents from the other ends of towns to reach uh, convenience stores, uh, restaurants, uh, laundromats, gas stations and so forth, all on that side of the street, especially. So uh, you do see the cross country team sometimes running um, you see people pushing baby strollers, uh, people in wheelchairs and walking out in the highway. This will uh, take care of that. This will keep those residents safe. Uh, I don't really have to sell this project too much, but uh, we, it's all our interest in keeping the public safe. And so, Gerald, uh, what I'm asking is for the support of the Board of Public Works to construct this sidewalk from that driveway um, to Zurich Way. Um, by doing so, we may have to bring the sidewalk out into the street some, uh, maybe a foot or two. I did talk to Councilman uh, Larry Clemens, since this is his ward, and uh, he too is very passionate about this sidewalk project. And working with Lock Mueller Group, they're, they're going to help us um, pull this plan together on that. And they're, they're doing the um, sidewalk project with us on Highway 66. So. Uh, they felt like this. They would be willing to help us with this. Larry, is there anything to add? Are you you're on here? I think, weren't you? And you might be muted. No, Chris. No, uh, I'm, I'm on here now. Um, no, I think you've done a good job of explaining it. I mean, I've had uh, a number of residents up in the Virgin Hills area ask, ask for access. Um, uh, the request was for a crosswalk there on 66 from William Tell to McDonald's so that they could get to the other side of 66 in order to provide them access to um, some of the walking trails that they they enjoy doing that. But um, but actually this what uh, Chris has proposed would be a better solution. It, we, it would cause us difficulty crossing a limited access highway with a with a sidewalk there but since since there's already a walkway on washington street that wouldn't be wouldn't be an issue but um i i think this would be a, a great benefit to not only the Berglund hills area but to the rest of the town also that that wants to walk up to some of these areas that now they're literally taking their life in their hands uh, to walk up the highway. So um, I fully support this and uh, I think it's a, a great project. Thank you, uh, Councilman Clayman. Uh, you'll notice if you do drive up there, Gerald, um, along the creek there where the uh, guardrail is, you'll notice a very worn path of people here walking, uh, trying their best obviously to, to stay out of the street. Um, so I, there is a need for this. Uh, and that shows a lot of people walking 
in my opinion, more so probably from the Washington Street side than it actually probably would be from the uh, the Berglund Hills in. Uh, I'm not sure which most of the traffic is coming from on the walking, but I think it's important to connect the Washington Street corridor and, and that whole end of town to uh, the rest of this. So what's really nice about this project is from William Chubb Boulevard, you'll be able to walk from there all the way to the other end of town, down Main Street. The connectivity uh, is endless with this, with this project. Uh, and that's what we, we wanna be a, a walkable, um, healthy community. And this is another option uh, to do that, I think so. Gerald, do you have any questions regarding uh, approval to allow a sidewalk to be structured, constructed there? Again, this doesn't have to be done this year, it can be done next year or the year after. It just needs to be done before we start, uh, if we're approved for the grant, uh, the other project. I have no problem with it. All right. Um, would you make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to allow the uh, construction of the sidewalk if we get the grant. Perfect. And I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Gerald, for your support on that. It's, it's very appreciative. We'll move down to new business. Uh, first item under new business is the curb cut. And I was hoping Steve would be on for this. So I don't have a whole lot of information on it. Um, Pat, do you have much on this? No, I don't have anything on that, no. Okay. Um, I don't have a lot of information on it, so I think we need to table it until we move forward because when I, I looked this up, it's a residence. It looks like it already has a driveway unless they're wanting to replace it. Hey, Mayor. Yes. Uh, he just wants to widen that, the previous one he has. Okay. It so you know about like, it. <laughs> a little you. bit, yes. <laughs> it doesn't look like it'd be an issue. It's, it's not going to be an issue for waste water or, uh, or storm water. This, is this the residence here? <clears throat> yeah. No. Okay. It's it's Melt uh, Melton's. Well, this I think is, it said it was under River City Properties, ten thirty five Main Street. That's the one that pulled up. Be this driveway right here, wouldn't it? I mean, maybe. Oh, okay. Is this the one that's already redone? Remodeled? I'm not sure. It's an old picture. Okay. Okay. I, just, I got it off the GIS. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All I want to do is wi uh, widen that a little. Okay. Is my understanding so I, I don't if that's all there is then i i don't have a problem approving that uh gerald do you no okay well then we won't need to table it so i'll make a motion to approve uh widening the uh the driveway at 1035 main street i'll second it uh we have motions made and second any further discussion will they have to uh get a curb cut permit for that yes yes they okay. will okay usually uh, we do that when you when you do that Okay. Yeah, yeah, they'll have to get one. And, and I'll follow up with uh, Mr. Goodson to make sure that they do. So we have a motion okay. made to second. Um, we had further discussion. Um, hearing no more, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is your NDOT community crossings. I don't have any uh, paperwork on that, but what I do want to ask. Um, the NDOT Community Crossings Round 1 applications are, are due uh, this month. Um, what I'm asking is for the board's support and approval to allow um, the city's match of 100, not to exceed $160,000. Um, Connie will be able to sign this letter. It has to be actually signed by her, so we're going to authorize her to sign it. Um, so it would be $160,000 of Tell City's match, uh, $480,000. Uh, that could be uh, in dots for a total project of $640,000 if we're awarded by uh, the community crossings and the NDOT grant program. Um, we, we hope that we're going to seek that amount, but doesn't necessarily mean we'll, we'll get it. Um, we do plan to apply in round two again once we uh, get some more of our MVH, MVH funds. I think that's. Um, and that could be about maybe another 60,000. And that's what we plan to use. So it'd be another 180 worth of NDOT for another 240, I think is what we, for the total project. Um, round one, we're gonna focus on paving only. Round two, we're gonna focus on ceiling. Uh, we are, we're just not there with all the numbers on ceiling and what we can do. And, the, and we really wanna make sure we have a full understanding of the process 
We feel it's a good process. We feel it's a good match. We just have to understand everything before we go into our first, using this for a community crossings uh, funds right out the gate. So uh, the next, if they do a round two, typically that's in July, applications are, are submitted. Uh, we'll have all of our ducks in a row at that point. Uh, we really want to understand this process fully before we get too deep into it. And the worst thing we could do is put that in an application and have to turn that back in because of something we didn't understand right away. So I think the paving for round one and round two will be uh, for ceiling. And that may be something we do moving forward for years to come, uh, as long as this program's around and we have the funds to match it. Um, Connie, did I miss anything on that? Did I cover I that? I don't think so. I think you covered everything on that. All right. That's, <laughs> she's been my lifesaver with this. <laughs> Uh, finding you the money. So. She did find it. Gerald, just so you know, I will share with you where the money's coming from. Uh, general uh, fund, uh, public works would be uh, 25000 out of that fund. MVH restricted, 60000 And local road and street, 25000 for 110. We planned that where we come up with the 160 match is if we take 50000 from the edit plan. Is that right, Connie? Yes. Okay. So that's where the 160 max comes from. Uh, we just we don't have all of our estimates yet. That's why we're asking for this. Typically, we wouldn't do it this way. We don't have all the estimates yet from uh, J.H. Rudolph. Uh, just to you have to submit estimates in order to even apply. And doesn't mean they're going to get the bids because it still has to be bid later. Somebody else can come in and bid lower and get it. Uh, but we do have to submit estimates. Okay. So I'm looking for your approval to allow Connie to sign that for up to 160,000 max. <laughs> oh, I'll make that motion, but if we don't get it, we don't, we get, it's just upfront money on paper, more Pretty or less. Yeah, yeah, we don't. They just want to know how much money, they just need to know that we have those funds available. Right, right. I'll make that motion. All I'll right. allow them. Uh, I have a motion made by Gerald and I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, item C, is stoplight at 12th and Mozart. I did throw up a picture just for discussion points. I went on Google Maps and just kind of copied it. Um, Gerald recommended uh, discussing this, and I don't know the right process, but I think it's important to put in the, for our records and in the minutes um, that uh, we do. Is the traffic count maybe in, in line with this, Gerald, or what you are as a previous council member and board of works member for many years, what are your thoughts on the process of having this looked into as uh, the stoplights basically on Mozart street, you, you, it's like five seconds, <laughs> not quite, but it's fairly short compared to the 12th street way. Um, you're lucky to get a few cars through there without it changing again. I can absolutely attest to that. There you go, you got one. That's where our office is at. And if you pull out of our parking lot, and you see a green light. Our parking lot is literally to the left of this picture. And if you pull out of the parking lot and you see a green light, you're not gonna make it. I, I believe that to be true. Gerald kind of said the same thing. If you're a half a block away and you know, you'd be lucky to make it. Um, half a I, block, think it's, no chance. I think it's worth, and we're not uh, saying anything, speaking poorly of NDOT at all. We're just asking that they look into it and see if there's something can be done. Is that fair to say, Gerald? Well, I know though. Yeah, we need to re have them adjust that timer because I know we've had a lot of accidents there, and I feel that some of the people trying to beat that light are, you know, running, and then we have a wreck. That was the next thing I was going to say, Gerald. If you're if you're coming out of my parking lot at my office there, um, as you look to the right, which would be to the east, uh, or or towards the country club, towards 19th Street from my office you better look sharp because people will come flying up through there knowing that they've got to really go fast to make that light. Um, if it's, we, uh, it's downright dangerous at our office. And, and likewise for the fire department right across the street from us, unless they've got their sirens going, they're really running the risk of getting smashed by somebody. Yes. Uh, I think we need, if the police department will pull some data for us, how many accidents we've had there in the last year or so, and write a letter to NDOT and see if they would come in and, and uh, maybe look at adjusting that timer because it don't stay green very long. And, and you know, I don't know if there's this thing as calibrating them if they, I don't know, but we'll look into it. Uh, Assistant Chief, is that something that you can pull up, bring, get to me, please? 
maybe within the next week or two, and I'll work, I'll work on getting a letter typed up, and I'll reach out to our NDOT representative as well, maybe send them an email or a re a actual official letter, but. Yes, yes, sir, Mayor, I will, uh, I'll pull those stats uh, as far as accidents. You want a, about a year's worth? Uh, yeah, get a year, get two years, a year okay. or two. That'll okay. give us plenty and separate them, maybe 19 and 20, whatever. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I'll start on that in the morning. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. And Gerald, thank you for bringing this up. Um, it's something that I've said that light many times before. If no cars come the other way, I'm like, is it ever going to change? <laughs> so That's true. I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, thank you. Any further questions on that? Well, the fire department has a, a tool they can use to trip it where they can get out. But like Jeff said, you still got to pull out in that intersection if there's a car zooming by. You know, it's dangerous. Yeah. So I, well, I think it's something something to look at. If the state would help us a little bit, you know, that, that'd be great. Well, I, I, they might. I think it's definitely worth reaching out. The worst they could say is no. That's so true. It's not like it's going to hurt anything. So thank you. All right, uh, next item on the agenda is item D, the regional arts photo booth request. I just received this email literally today. <laughs> uh, well, actually it says, yeah, the 19th this morning. So um, Kelly has, uh, she's with the Tell City Regional Arts and she's requesting, um, it says, I, Kelly, am planning to host a photo booth um, throughout February. And the plan is to park outside of the uh, bottom of the barrel on Main Street, which is the old Alvis Cleaner building there in a 600 block. It would be sponsored by the Tell City Regional Arts Association, which is why I would like to get uh, your consent. The street department suggests I reach out to you about this since I would like to park my small photo camper on Main Street for three to four hours per day. Uh, they didn't see a problem with it, but I've reached out to the health department multiple times. Obviously, they haven't heard anything back, and that's, that's because they're very busy. Uh, health department probably doesn't have time to respond, and, uh, but maybe that's something that could be uh, worked out later. Um, if on Main Street is not Fabo, do you have another, uh, know of another spot? Gerald, um, Assistant Chief, you know, I, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, I assume this is going to be a fundraiser for the Tulsa Region Arts to have a, a picture taken of some sort. I don't, as long as it's not, you know, impeding traffic or out in the street, I don't see that being a problem. Um, if they're taking pictures from the curb with the, the I think she called it a camper, uh, behind them uh, from the sidewalk, I, I don't see a problem with that. I don't, I don't know what, I mean, yeah, if, as long as it don't cause traffic problems and the local businesses there don't have a problem. I don't think they do. I think that they're kind of partnering with the bar bottom of the barrel, which is, uh, we've got another item on the agenda for them after after this one. I think they're trying to partner up just, you know, drum up excitement and exposure uh, to that new business downtown. I think that's, to me, how I understand it to be that situation. That's that new wine bar, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Assistant Chief Roger Smith, do you see any issue? I mean, other than kind of the concern I brought up? I don't, Mayor. Um, I don't see any issue at all. And um, if we could be of any assistance as far as cones or anything like that, please reach out. We'd be glad to help if we could. All right. Uh, Gerald, I think we'll need a motion on this. So I'll make a motion to approve this as long as it does not uh, cause any traffic problems uh, in that location. I'll second that as long as the, the county health department's okay with it too. Good. Under the COVID, under the COVID restrictions. I'll add that to my motion too. <laughs> Thank you for I'll that. A, that's a, a good suggestion. Um, I'll second it. All right. We have a motion has been made in second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Last item under new business is bottom of the barrel. Um, this is just an exterior, kind of a somewhat recent exterior shot since it's been renovated. I did receive... Uh, a correspondence with Dr. Adam Brockman, who is the owner of Bottom of the Barrel, and they have requested um, Bottom of the Barrel that we would like to put outdoor seating in the spring. And wonder if we had any issues with that. Furthermore, it goes into say or possibly uh, extending seating on weekends uh, in front of Complete Wellness, which he does own directly next door. Uh, and then another suggestion would know, to possibly uh, pave or fill in uh, the grassy area in front of uh, both area areas, meaning this here to allow for seating. 
I did uh, correspond back to him and say, um, as far as filling this in at this time would not uh, probably be feasible. It would, it would definitely uh, mess some things up, I feel. Uh, but I did explain to him that I would bring this for the Board of Works. I'm assuming they're going to want to put some high top tables out here or something. I don't know. My question I have, it is, it is wine. So I, I don't know how you could serve that outside without any type of, of a barrier there. Um, that's something that we're going to have to address there. You know, if they're going to serve any type of food or sandwiches with soft drinks, that's, I don't have an issue with that. But the alcohol part, we, there, there's a cove here that they have a lot more room just behind the bumper of that car. That's acceptable, I think. No, no problems there for just regular food and, and soft drinks, water, coffees, whatever. But when it comes to alcohol, it, I don't see how you could serve that outside without any type of a railing or roping or fencing or something. I'm not the alcohol expert, but anything I've ever seen in Indiana, it has to be done that way. Jeff, tell me. I, I'm wrong. I'll have to do some research and see what uh, Alcoholic Beverage Commission rules. Um, I'll, I'll have to figure out whether it's alcohol. I'm sure it's an Alcoholic Beverage Commission rule. Um, and likewise, maybe even health department rules. Um, I'm sure there are some, um, and I'm sure that it would require some type of uh, enclosure. I'm, I'm, I'm about 99% certain. His best bet would be if he could have something out back. He does own that parking lot behind Complete Wellness and as well as the, bra the back, it's kind of hillish, but grassy area behind the, the building there where he could fence that in and control it himself if he's willing to have some type of an event outside with wine and so forth, uh, where it could be fenced in and controlled a lot better. Uh, but I will, I will reach out to Dr. Brockman and uh, kind of get a little bit more details of what he's wanting. I may just stop down there and have him show me. In the meantime, uh, Jeff, if you could reach out and, and see what you can find with the alcohol beverage, um, I'll, reach out, I'll reach out to uh, Kim with the health department and uh, when she's not busy, which is like never right now. So, but I will reach out to Kim and, and get, see what concerns that she may have regarding that as well. Um, I don't think we need a motion on this tonight because he did say spring. So it's not like it's, he's wanting to do something next week. So... This okay. is mainly for information. Well, he would have a lot more room in front of the chiropractic office than there. He's got the the covered dry through part of that, even some shade yeah. potentially. Uh, but I'll, I'll I'll sit there and I'll go by there and meet with him uh, and get his suggestions, what he's looking at doing, and just kind of have a plan. But I wanted to at least update the board that we were we were in the process of trying to. Figure this out. I know in many years past, Gerald, you were probably on the board of works back when Capers wanted to do something similar to this outside their place, right? Yes. And was yes. alcohol an issue then? I don't remember, but you know they had to come up with a plan. I think it had to have a, a railing around it, and you'd have to have a sign. You know, you got to be twenty-one and over to. Come. It's like a beer garden, you know, like the wine yeah. fest. And there's yeah. rules, and Jeff can he'll find all that out. But and these aren't our rules. These are rules higher up than us, but we definitely need to make sure they're being followed. These would be state rules. Yeah, but we yeah. want to make sure they're being followed. We want to be good stewards with the state uh, and, and moving forward with things that we approve too. So I'll work on that, but I just wanted to bring the board up to speed of what was going on there in case anybody asked. Any okay. further questions or discussion on that for moving on? No, thank you. You're welcome. That is all that I have under um, new business. I do have just a very... It's not really small, but it's a big deal. Mayor's report. I don't know, uh, Gerald, if you are aware or anybody else on here that Tell City, Indiana was ranked number one for best small city in the United States for working from home. I've seen that. I commented on that. I, you know, uh, News 25 was in today, and this is something this community, uh, Pick Perry, PCDC, Tell City, the whole county has worked towards, you know, people being able to live in Perry County in Tell City and work remotely and work from home. Um, I used the example of a, a lady I know who works for the company who owns all the artifacts for the Titanic. She lives right here in Tell City, Indiana, and she does a lot of the human resources, fills all the calls for their exhibits that's in uh, Las Vegas and uh, Orlando, Florida. So it goes to show you that it can be done. Uh, Perry County and Tell City is the right place to do that. And uh, we were very honored to receive this. So you may see me if I can find a few dollars, I can 
get convinced Khan to let me buy. We may buy something and do some type of little banner with this or something, you know, maybe hang out on the portico or something just to, you know, this is wor definitely worth bragging over. Uh, a lot of hard work went into getting things like this accomplished. Things like this just don't happen. Um, we had to work hard to, to make sure we have the internet speed and quality, uh, affordable housing. And while we still have a need for all those things, but we're, we're definitely in the right direction. And I'm honored and proud to uh, see Tell City receive this award. And it's great because it's the United States. You think that's a pretty big deal. Uh, I think it is. You know, there's a lot of surveys out there from different companies and stuff, and they pick others, but this one picked us, and I think it's great. So, any questions regarding that? If no. not, um, that's all I have under the mayor's report. So uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I got a motion to adjourn by Gerald, and I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. The meeting stands adjourned. Thank you all very much. Uh, have a great day.